Hi everybody, the purpose of this video is to give you some examples of problems that you might use uh, the properties of exponents on. So I will be going through the first four problems from your homework. Here we have one, two, and three. The fourth one's on the next page, we'll get to it in a minute. So we're looking at six times six squared. With a calculator, I bet you could come up with the answer to this, but I'm not looking for a number. I'm looking for you to use the properties of exponents. Now, 6. Anytime you have a number by itself, it is 6 to the first. So when I multiply 6 to the first times 6 squared, that is a straight application of our property to multiply the same base. You add the exponents. So the answer to this would be 6 to the third. Yes, you could get that number out of the calculator, but if you really understand properties of exponents, that's the answer I'm looking for. Let's get to the third one for a second. This one is pretty simple. We have a base, 2, that is being raised to a power, which is again being raised to a power. Our property says that if you're raising a power to a power, you multiply those together. So we are going to get 2 to the sixth. Here's some proof. 2 cubed squared is 2 cubed times 2 cubed. If you add the 3 and the 3, you get 6. So 2 to the 6th. That is also a number, but I would rather see your answer looking like this with a base and an exponent than just a plain number. All right, the final problem on this page, problem number 2, is going to be a couple of different properties put together. Uh, this is a tricky one. It's got kind of a tricky answer, but don't get discouraged. There are a lot of ways to do this. I'm going to show you a simple one. So looking here... I have a power raised to a power. Base raised to a power raised to a power. Now, in between these two, I have multiplication. So what I'm going to do first is the exponent. I'm going to worry about the exponent first, and then I'll worry about multiplication. That's just your regular order of operations. So I've got 9 to the 6th on the left. That's going to stay the same. And on the right, I'm going to raise 9 squared to the negative 3. I'm going to get 9 to the negative 6. Now, I could do something with that. I could do something with the negative 6. There is a negative exponent property, but I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Actually, I'm going to avoid it altogether. So I've got 9 to the 6th times 9 to the negative 6th. When I take the same base, so in this case, that's 9, and I multiply it together, I'm going to add the exponents, and here I'm going to get 9 to the 0. 6 plus negative 6 equals 0. So 9 to the 0 is going to be 1. Here's an alternate way of doing that problem, the thing that I said I was going to come back to and then said I was going to avoid, and here we are. 9 to the 6 times 1 over... 9 to the 6th. Pause the video, see if you can figure out why that is. All right, the negative exponent property, so in red I'm doing this the second way, the negative exponent property says that a negative exponent puts that in the denominator, so instead of being 9 to the negative 6, it's 1 over 9 to the 6th. Knowing what I know about fractions, when I multiply those together, I'm going to get 9 to the 6th over 9 to the 6th. Don't use your calculator to figure this out. Use your brain. What's something divided by itself? One. Another way of getting that answer. Same answer both ways. All right, last problem here. This is problem number four on your worksheet. A lot of stuff going on. First of all, work inside your parentheses. Work inside your parentheses before you do anything else. I'm going to start with the more obvious of the two. I have a 2 in the numerator and the 2 in the denominator of that fraction. Let's reduce that to 1 over x. It's always okay to reduce a fraction. 1 over x. Now, I have 4 over x to the negative third. Now, the negative exponent property has this cool consequence that if you have 4 over x to the negative third, that's the same thing as taking it in the denominator and putting it in the numerator. So I'm going to get 4 times x cubed, the positive third. So this is where you switch your sign. 
switch the sine of the negative 3 to become positive 3. So this problem I've got is now 4x cubed times 1 over x quantity squared. I love that I've got a simpler expression on the left. I don't have to worry about the denominator anymore. I love that the thing on the right, the 2 over 2 was reduced out. This is great. Now, uh, properties here, I have to square something, and then I have to multiply together. I'm going to square first. I'm going to do the exponent first. So, the part on the left stays the same. 4x cubed stays the same. The right side is going to become 1 squared over x squared. As an aside, 1 squared is 1, so this is really 1 over x squared and I have 4x cubed times 1 over x squared. If you need to, make life easier for yourself. 4x cubed is 4x cubed over 1. Numerator times numerator. Denominator times denominator. Almost there. I've got one more property to apply. I've got some x's on the top. I've got some x's on the bottom. I want those to reduce out. So this is going to be 4 over x. How do I get x? x cubed over x squared is x to the first. And I'm not going to write x to the first here. That's a waste of space. I'm just going to write 4 times x. All right. Thanks.